Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar with ATG. I appreciate you tuning in today to learn about residential lot grading and rear swale modeling with corridors. Uh, this is a workflow I've actually worked on a lot over uh, my 20 year career in civil design. Um, just like everything else in civil 3D, there are multiple ways of doing residential lot grading um, and rear yard swales. Uh, this happens to be the way I found to be uh, pretty efficient. Um, that's not to say that it is the only way. My name is Felix Cortez. I'm a civil infrastructure technical specialist here at ATG. We're a platinum partner with Autodesk and Bluebeam. Our goal is to be your one-stop shop for software licensing, training, and support. We have hardware solutions as well um, in the form of Bimbox. Um, and we definitely love doing these webinars and creating content to help our customers uh, become more efficient and proficient in the software they use every day. Our agenda today, uh, like I said, there are many ways of doing residential lot grading. This has worked for me since uh, release 2019. Uh, when we're able to utilize feature lines and corridors as baselines uh, that really made this workflow a lot more efficient so what is dynamic residential lot grading to me it's the process of utilizing a corridor to do stuff a corridor wouldn't necessarily be thought of doing making lot grading less tedious and more efficient it was my ultimate goal when i kind of found this workflow and by dynamic, I'm not saying it's 100% dynamic. Like most things in Civil 3D, it's around 80% dynamic. When you do make changes, you will have to come in and rerun the corridor. Um, but for the most part, <coughs> uh, this workflow has been working very well for me. And hopefully the few gaps that it does have are fixed in future releases. So how does corridor modeling fit into a typical workflow? Corridors are often only thought of for streets, channels, and maybe ponds. I've always tried to push the boundary of what a corridor can do. With a lot of new features available in latest releases, I've been able to really push the boundary of what a traditional corridor can do, and that's what we're going to get into today. Now, is dynamic grading for everyone. This way of doing grading is definitely not for everyone. Um, this was strictly something I found as a more advanced civil 3D user. Um, I've had lots of experienced, inexperienced designers and engineers who would get into my files after using this workflow and um, not be able to find their way around. Um, so this is an advanced technique mainly geared towards advanced users. And what's the most efficient way of dynamically grading lots? <clears throat> this is the way I have found of doing residential lot grading. Um, we will utilize a lot of targeting available out of, and that's available in the out of the box subassemblies. They do have limitations. And one of the things I did find by ultimately coming up with this workflow was <clears throat> you can also definitely go down the rabbit hole of subassembly composer to really unleash the potential of this workflow. However, in this class, I'm strictly going to be using out of the box subassemblies, mainly conditional horizontal targets and the link width and slope subassembly. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the demonstration. So I have a file here. And in this file, I have a typical roadway corridor. I haven't done the intersections. And what I'll show you is over here are our assemblies. In this case, I'm using a full street width assembly with my uh, basic lane transition, a urban 
Herb Gutter General, and then they link with and slope subassembly to go all the way out to my right away. Like with a lot of subassemblies, I do have a condition where I don't need a curb and right away on my right side. And I have another condition where I don't need it on my left. These are going to be primarily what we're going to be using to do the lot and rear yard grading. This assembly is aptly named lot grading type A. This is lot grading type B. And this is lot grading type C. Now, I'm, I am actually in Texas and I am not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that type of grading is only to our region. We have three types of grading to that we can do to residential lots. And here I'll explain the three. So if where my cursor is, is the right of way, grading from back to front towards the street is our type A grading. Going with the split grading where the half to the rear grades to the rear, and the half to the front grades to the front is our type B grading. And last but not least, we do have grading from the front to the back, which is our type C grading. Now I have it set up this way. Ultimately, we are going to have another configuration of this. What I want to show is a simpler way of doing ultimately the same thing we're trying to do. Now we have our roadway corridor and as we all know, we can extract feature lines. And this is really, like I was saying earlier, where this workflow really kicked in for me. And so what I'm going to do is with the corridor selected, I'm going to go up here and click my feature line from corridor button. Go ahead and select my right away lines. And I'm going to hit enter. Uh, this dialog box has been around for a while, but they have added some new features if you go to settings. Since we do want our corridor to ultimately whatever updates we make to it to also reflect on the, the feature line, we definitely want to make sure that the dynamic link to corridor is checked on. I personally don't use the apply smoothing. Um, it adds a few of the vertices that I don't really want. And make sure that the feature line is named. We will need that name when we add it to the corridor. And with that set, I'll go ahead and hit OK. Let's go ahead and extract our feature lines. And now let's unselect our corridor. Now if we look, here are our are two feature lines. There are no vertices on it for me to edit because it is dynamically linked to the corridor, but they are there. And so now let's say that we wanted to grade all of this side towards our existing ground. Go ahead and add a feature line just to make sure that that is the type of grading we would want a type C grading in this area. So I have a polyline in here already. I'm going to go ahead and convert it to a feature line. And all these settings are fine. I'm going to go ahead and assign an elevation from our surface. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to make the surface fine. I do not want to add intermediate grade points as I've already added vertices where I want them. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Let's go ahead and take this feature line, right click, and let's add it to our, our overall surface. We'll hit OK. And we don't have to give it a name. We'll just hit OK. And we can see there's two things that are happening here. On this side of my block, these are actually grading towards existing ground down. On this side, it's actually grading up towards the other street. 
So on this side, we would want to type A grading. On this side, we would want to type C grading. Now, since we are going to run the assembly off of this feature line, we can go ahead and select our corridor. And I like to actually use the buttons here without actually going into the corridor properties. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add Baseline. And we're going to add a baseline from our feature line. So we'll go ahead and hit the green selection box, select that line. And then we'll go ahead and hit OK. And with the corridor still selected, let's go ahead and add a region. And as we hover over, you see it's kind of faint, but it, the red line is where you're going to add your region to a baseline. So we'll select the feature line. Let's go from here all the way down to the end. The assembly we're going to want to use is plot grading type C. We'll hit OK. We don't need to set any of our targets at the moment. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And when we exit out of the corridor, we can go ahead and update our surface. And just like that, we've graded from our right away to our rear yard with one fell swoop for all of these lots. Now, this is one workflow. Um, here in Texas, what we would normally have to do is a lot of clients would want this pad to be flat going from side to side, but they do want it to grade from front to back or back to front. Let's go ahead and add in a feature line. Go ahead and give it a name. And we'll add a feature line from our right away. It already grabbed my elevation for me, or I could just hit surface and make sure that it is pulling it from my corridor. And since this is going down, when I select it, you can see it's going down at 1%, which is what our assembly is wanting it to do. We can go ahead and hit enter to accept that. Let's go ahead and end the command. Let's hit Enter to bring it back up. We're going to want to do the other side as well. So we'll go ahead and select our spot, which is right there. Hit S for surface. And then we actually want to bring the finished ground overall surface in for a spot. And then we'll just go perpendicular to set the front. A quick check is that it is at 1% going up, so it is following the surface. And we'll go ahead and accept that. And now what we could do is do a third feature line, which is ultimately going to be our target. And we can go from that spot, pulling in my elevation for me, to that spot. And so if we were to look at the street profile, we would be at a negative 0.89%. So I'm going to go ahead and accept those results and hit Enter. And so before I add this as a target, I do want to double check some stuff. I'm going to go to Annotate. I'm going to add some labels to these lines we just created. I'm going to make sure that they are grades. Go ahead and add them so that we can have a visual representation of what we're trying to do, and make sure that it is reflected on the, the corridor. Well, since this is grading down, and we want this to be flat across the front, but we want to have a 1% minimum. What we actually want to hold is the low side, because as the street is coming up, this side can be a little bit steeper. And again, this is uh, more of a regional type grading. Um, but I am showing it to you so that down the road, if you need to do something advanced like this, you would definitely have the tools to do it. I'm going to go ahead and close out my labels. 
I'm just going to select the feature line. We're going to go ahead and do with elevation edit. We'll make this 0%. And when we do a quick regen, we'll see this side is now steeper than the 1%, which is fine. And what we will see is once we add this target, this whole lot is going to change where it's going to be flat side to side on this back end. And then the rear yard will also update its grading. So I'm going to go ahead and select the corridor. I'm going to go to our Edit Targets button, select our region. And we're going to go ahead and edit our parkway. I do want to select the feature line from the drawing, which will be this one. I'll accept that, accept that. And now when it reruns my corridor, and I update my surface, you will see now I have flat, a flat pad going from side to side, but it's still grading from front to back. Same can be said with the rear yard grading. So with that, if I needed to do all of these lots the same way, I would have to repeat the steps. So this is you know, a, a pretty advanced way of doing it. It's still not the way that I personally would like to do it, but this is a way to really wrap your head around what we're ultimately trying to accomplish, which is to have each one of these pad areas be individually graded. So the work, the one shortcoming of this workflow is, let's say we actually wanted to make this a B lot. Well, what I would actually have to do is come in here, split this region, and split it at the property line. That's fine. And so now that this region is isolated, I can actually just come in here, click the Modify Region, go to my Region Properties, change out the assembly I'm using, let's say to a B lot. Go ahead and accept those changes. And you can see now there is a line going across, which is from, if I go to my assembly, you'll see that's the front part of my pad to the high point, and then the back side goes down. So that's a line we're seeing there. So let's go ahead and rebuild the corridor in case it hasn't done it. Let's go ahead and rebuild our surface. And now we have B lot grading through there. And again, if we want it to be flat like this, since we're using a new assembly, didn't retain the targeting, we can simply select the corridor, go to edit target, select the region, and we are going to set our parkway. Select that line again, hit OK, hit OK. And so this is where, even though this is a pretty efficient way of doing it, now that we're actually coming up to this high point here, what we would actually want to do is change this whole grading up front, right? So we're no longer wanting to go down and back up and then back down. We want all this to come up. And so, so we know we want a 1% minimum. Let's go ahead and select the feature line, go to our quick elevation editor. Let's go up at 1% now. Make this flat at zero. Go ahead and hit escape and regen. And you can see, I don't know if you guys noticed, this is a newer feature. Um, I have in the past had to write these in, but the arrows, direction arrows, are facing downstream, which is a really nice feature. This is strictly out of the box uh, template that I'm using for this demonstration. Um, it's something that they did build in that, um, like I said, in the past, I've had to write these myself. And they're a really good visual representation. Anytime you have maybe this guy facing the wrong way, 
It's something you wouldn't notice unless you actually came into the feature line and actually edited it. So with these changes done, all I have to do is rebuild my corridor. I go ahead and rebuild my surface. And now this grading is updated. One word of caution and one thing I have run into with this particular workflow is it's not the ultimate workflow we are going to show. So since this feature line that we have built this side of the grading with is actually associated to any updates that are done to this corridor. If you rebuild this corridor, the lot grading corridor would then say, hey, I've, I see some updates. If I had both of these on rebuild automatically, what would happen is it would find itself in a loop where the main corridor is telling this baseline, hey, you have changes because this updated this baseline will do the changes, which will then tell the corridor, hey, I have new changes that I need to rebuild. And you would end up in an endless loop where at that point you just have to force close Civil 3D. One of the things I've learned is um, for not that that is a reason I don't do it anymore. Um, another reason is if you were to do an entire subdivision like this, if every single change you try to do, you're rebuilding the corridor, you're going to be less efficient. One of the things I like to do to avoid that inefficiency is I'll just rebuild once I've made changes. So that's uh, this is one way of doing the dynamic grading that I've come across in the past. Again, it's not ultimately the best way um, because you do have to come in and manually make changes still. So let me go ahead and jump into, let me get rid of this region. Rebuild my corridor. So one of the other ways <clears throat> that I've seen lot grading done that is a little bit more user friendly is since this is already done up front, typically, you can use a polyline to do your pad for you. Now this would be in an instance where you wanted a completely flat, flat pad. So this technique could be used for, let's say a commercial project, but you can just grab that polyline, assign it an elevation, add it to your surface, um, but then you're stuck with this back piece that isn't really tied to anything dynamically. Actually, all this is just line work that ultimately you would have to update on your own and hope that you don't make mistakes. So now let's go move forward to the real reason for this demonstration today, the other workflow. Let me go ahead and rebuild this surface. Let's go up to our assemblies. I'm going to go ahead and open up with either control three, or you can just come up here to the tool palette button. We're going to open up our tool palettes. And out of the box, we have a conditional horizontal target that we can utilize. What this assembly will, sub assembly will do is it, you'll see it's going to add some line work in here. But there's two settings on this. If I select it now and I go to properties, the main one is the type. So there is two options, found and not found. So what we do when we put this out on our subassembly is we tell it when it finds a horizontal target, do something. If you don't find a horizontal target, do something or do nothing. So for now, let's go ahead and leave these settings alone. We'll do a not found at first on the left side. And we're going to go ahead and create this new piece right off of our existing assembly. 
So there's our not found. And so let's go ahead and select our found one. And we can just select this guy. And now I know I have three different types of grading, right? So when it doesn't find a target, I want it to do nothing. Let's say when it finds this particular target, we want it to do type A grading. Let's go ahead and change this to 0.75 over one. We'll add this one. And now what we could do is when we set this target, we could tell it, hey, when you find this particular target, let's do lot grading B. And because we know we have three, we set this to 0.5. And when you find this target, we're going to want it to do our lot C grading. Go ahead and hit Enter. And now there's some housekeeping that has to happen. So if we were to actually run this, which I will do, I'll rebuild my corridor. It actually creates kind of a mess. If I go to edit target and I select this, you can see here's our subassembly names. Well, these all say conditional horizontal target. So that we're not sure which one we're targeting at this point. So let's go back to our assembly and do some housekeeping. So what we want to do is first grab the not found subassembly. Do a right click and go to the subassembly properties. And what I like to use is CHT for conditional horizontal target, not found, and the side that it's on, left. Go ahead and hit OK. Now for this one, We'll right click, go to our subassembly properties, CHT for conditional horizontal target. This is found on the left, and it's going to be for a lot grading A. Let's go ahead and copy this because we're going to re need to reuse it. Hit OK. Grab the type B grading subassembly, go to surface properties, we'll paste in the A and make it a B. And last but not least, let's do the same thing for the type C grading. Hit apply, hit OK. And so now what we're going to want to do is mirror these over, right? We want a left and a right. And so what we'll be able to do is use one assembly to do a lot of our work for us, um, including the lot grading. So what we're going to want to do to transfer it to the right side is select it, right click. Let's go ahead and mirror it over to this side. And we'll do the same thing with the rest of them. So we'll go mirror over there, mirror this one over there. And lastly, we will mirror this one over there. Now, the assembly is smart enough to know that these guys already had names associated with them, but it wasn't smart enough to change it for us. So since these are on the right, we we'll want to replace those with an R. Go to this one, make sure that's on the right. And we will change this one to right. And lastly, this one. So now if we come to our corridor and we rebuild it so that it can pick up those changes we made to the sub to the assembly. Now if I come in to edit the target, you'll see that upfront work I did is now very clear for me. If I want to do a not found target, there's my not found, here's my lot grading A, B, and C for my right side. And here it is for my left side. So we'll go ahead and hit OK on this. Go ahead and unselect it. And so now we want, we know that these are the settings we already want. So we'll just do a simple copy. We'll select all of our pieces, right click, we'll copy this to A, grab these, right click, copy those to our B grading. 
and we will copy this to our C grading. And there's a little bit of housekeeping that we should do here as well. Where on our, so these are going to be named the same. If I grab this and I right click, go to my sub assembly, it just says Parkway. What we need to do is block grading C. Do block grading B. Lock grading A. And that's going to be important as we're about to copy this over to the right side or mirror it over to the right side. We want to make sure that there's some good housekeeping before we make a complete mess of this. So lock grading A. These are just the swales. Just to make sure that when once we do copy them, that they are named the same and when we go into our targeting that everything is named correctly. So now we'll do the same thing. We'll just mirror these over to our current part. Mirror this one to our B grading on the right side and lastly the lot A grading. So now with this guy intact, let me go ahead and go back to my corridor. Let's go ahead and rebuild it so it picks up the changes. So now the question is, how do we get this to actually be more efficient than the other way I showed you? So up front, what I've done is I've added some polylines in here. We take a look at them. They have a layer name that tells me what it is. So street A, lot grading C. If I come to this side, street A, lot grading A. What I can actually tell it, tell the corridor to do, is find all the polylines on that layer, not only on that layer, because let's say we had some lot C grading that was happening on the right side. Well, we can also check a box that I'll show you in a second that'll tell it only add the layers that are on this side of my assembly. And so let's go ahead and see how this is going to work. We'll go ahead and select our corridor. We'll go to edit targets again. But this time we're going to click the corridor itself, the main street corridor. Again, here are all of our options. Now we are going to work on the right side and we know that we want all of the lot C layers to be picked up. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and select the selector. And this time instead of doing selection by drawing, because I've done the legwork up front, I'm going to do by layer. Go to the very bottom. Here's my lot grading type C layer. And it's telling me there's 24 items on that layer. So I can just go ahead and tell it to grab all of them. And here's that button I was telling you. Use targets on the same side as the assembly. So even if some of these were on the right side, it wouldn't use them as a target because it, we're telling it to only use the ones on the left side. Let's go ahead and check that on and hit OK. And another nuance of this is when we begin, we're going to find a found condition. What that subassembly will not do is you cannot just simply select the found conditions. It's going to want a not found in between. And so I've already pre-populated these not found polylines as well and done the housekeeping of putting them all on the same layer. So when I select this, I can go to my right not found layer. It's found seven of them. I can go ahead and hit OK. And since I already those, know those are on the, the right side, I can go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. OK. 
now you can see it's actually was supposed to be the left side. So what I want to show you is how easy it is to remove these because I did them on the wrong side that fast. And now let's say I need to fix this. I go ahead and put it on the left side. So let's go ahead and do our not found left real quick. 16 of them. I only want to use the ones on your side. Let's go ahead and do block rating C. Same thing. And we'll use the ones on our side. Hit OK. And just like that, I was able to rectify something that had I done this a different way, would have created a pretty big mess. But very quickly, I was able to make the changes to my corridor. Now with this done, let me go ahead and it's already been rebuilt. So now let me update my surface. And you can see just like that, all of these are C plot grading. My not found is actually doing nothing in between my lots. So that would allow me to put a swale in between the lots if I needed to. My rear swale is being set for me off of the back of this. And so finally, since this is a conditional, uh, or sorry, a link with and slope subassembly on the back end, let's say, like in this case, maybe that swale isn't deep enough. It's actually, even though we're doing a minimum grade on this lot, it's actually above. So let's go ahead and create a feature line that we're ultimately going to use as a target. And all these settings are fine. And let's go from our elevation up here, which it grabbed for me, 609.54. Let's say we want to come down to this point at a 2% fall. And that way there's going to be an actual swale on here. We're not going to grade off site. So now all I have to do is select our corridor, edit the target for this. I'll go to our left rear lot C. And that's why this is where the upfront housekeeping with naming stuff is going to be very important. So rear yard lot grading on the left side. So we'll go ahead and actually select that feature line as a target for our elevate. Oh, sorry about that. We don't want the whole offset. We want the actual elevation target. Let's go ahead and select this as our target elevation. Hit OK. Hit OK. And now when we rebuild our surface, we'll see now we have this rear yard that is actually grading. And let's say now that's too steep. So I can actually just come in here, select my feature line. Let's change the grade to, let's say, minus 1%. It's as simple as rebuilding my corridor, rebuilding my surface. And now we can see a very detailed swale in the back there. Maybe these aren't steep enough. So maybe we need to actually reverse grade and instead go minus 1% that way. Again, I can go ahead and make the change, rebuild my corridor, and rebuild my surface. And now I can see a swale being created in the back. So again, this is a, uh, this is a workflow I found to be very efficient uh, here in the Texas region, where if I want to do these type A grading, I'll show you. Let's go ahead and just select our corridor, edit our targets. And this time we'll do the right side correctly. So do by layer, do the not found right. And we know that these want to be A lots. So we'll do type A layer. And we only want to do it on our side of the subassembly. Go ahead and hit OK. And I'll rebuild my surface. 
And just like that, I'm off and running with grading on this side. And so when you multiply that, let's say like in a situation like this where there's, you know, 800 lots you have to grade, you can do quite a bit of work in a short period of time and keep it relatively dynamic at the same time. So I'd like to thank you guys for your time. And again, please look forward to our upcoming webinars uh, from our marketing department. And we look forward to helping you guys out in the future. Yeah.